In this video, we're going to build a contactless thermometer. For this, I'll be using the Melexis 90614 Digital Non-Contact Infrared Thermometer. I'm going to connect it over I2C to an ESP32 and add an OLED screen as well as a battery shield so that I can carry the device around, take temperature measurements, and visualize them wherever I go. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They are a PCB manufacturing and assembly house. And one thing that sets them apart is that they're not a broker. Instead, they're a fully featured PCB manufacturing and assembly house offering a wide variety of services. Those include advanced PCBs like Flex and Rigid Flex, and also assembly and design of your printed circuit boards. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for the design, manufacturing, and assembly of your printed circuit boards. For this video, I'll be using an ESP32 development board in the Wemos form factor, a breakout board for the Melexis 9614, a proto shield so that I can easily connect the sensor breakout board to the ESP32, an OLED shield for visualizing the data, a battery shield for power, and a 2x1 base to hold it all together. As usual, you can find all of these components in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Assembling the hardware is pretty straightforward. It requires a little bit of soldering and then connecting all the boards to the base. Notice that because I want to have the OLED screen and the sensor on opposite sides, I'll do things a little bit differently. I'll use the long pin female header sockets, which allow me to place boards on each side of the base. You're welcome to follow along, or if you already know how to do this, feel free to skip ahead in the video. Before soldering the pins, make sure that you have the correct orientation of the proto shield by using the pin labels as a guide. As for the wiring, I'll use 3.3 volts for power, connect the two grounds, and use the default hardware I2C pins, which are D2 for data and D1 for the clock. With everything soldered up, we can connect the boards to the base. Bear in mind that if you want everything to fit nicely, the ESP32 board should be in position number two. I'll leave the battery disconnected for now and move on to the software side of things. To get a jump start on the code, I'll go to my demos repository for the ESP32. I'll go ahead and download it, and once I've uncompressed it, I'll copy the example that we did for the VL53L0X sensor. I'll go ahead and rename the directory and the file, and then open up the sketch. I'll need to install a couple of libraries, so I'll use the tools menu option to open up the library manager. I'll install the full version of the library for the Melexis 9614 instead of the Mini. Then for the OLED screen, I'll use the popular UHG2 library. Just to double check that my connections are correct for the sensor, I'll first open up one of the examples for the Melexis library. I'll go ahead and connect the board to the USB port of my computer, use the tools menu option to select the correct board and port, and without making any changes, I'll upload the code. With the code uploaded, I'll open up the serial monitor. 
and remembering to change the baud rate to what's specified in the sketch, if the connections are correct, I should be able to see some temperature data. Now that I verified the wiring of the sensor, I can go back to the sketch that I'm going to use. As the previous application was pretty similar to this, just with a different sensor, the changes that we'll need to make are very straightforward. I'll start by swapping out the name of the library and changing the name of the classes to match the Malexis sensor as well. I'll rename the object as well as the debug message and one major change I'll need for this sketch is to set the I2C communication with the OLED screen to 100 kHz. The default speed, which is 400 kHz, doesn't work with the Malexis sensor. I'll make sure that my variable names remain consistent and then in a loop function, I'll need to change how I was collecting the data. As the sensor reports temperature for the sensor itself, as well as the object in front of it, I'll declare two variables of type double. I'll use the read ambient temperature method to read the temperature of the sensor. I'll do this in degrees Celsius, but if you change the C to an F, you can do it in degrees Fahrenheit. Then to measure the temperature of an object placed in front of the sensor, I'll use the read object temperature method. I'll use the variable output to store the formatted string that I want to see. I'll print it out to the serial monitor for debugging purposes and then display it on the OLED screen. As for the temperature of the object, I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll of course change the data on the output string as well as the position of the text in the OLED screen. The last thing I'll do is use a longer delay between measurements and fix any leftover typos that I have in the code. With those changes in place, I'm ready to upload the code to the ESP32. If everything is working correctly, I'll use the first thing I can find to see the temperature changing. I can then go ahead and connect the battery, unplug the ESP32 from the USB connection, and use the device as a portable contactless thermometer. If I try to measure my body temperature, it gets pretty close. Notice that unfortunately the range of the sensor is not that great. So even though it's contactless, I need to come up pretty close to it. But there you have it. Really quickly, we've used the Malexis 9614 sensor and an ESP32 to build a contactless thermometer. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.